dear students welcome to epg patshala i am dr mp sija professor retired from the department of library and information science guru nanak dev university amritsar we are going to discuss the ways and modes of growth of knowledge and subject knowledge is important for growth progress and continuation of the society the progress mankind has made from cave dweller to space commuter is only due to the knowledge gathered used and passed on to the new generation it is the best possession a society has it is the knowledge which keeps the society in continuity knowledge itself is living growing and is dynamic its growth is multidimensional while it grows some part of it become dead or obsolete that is they become useless or irrelevant the knowledge must be kept young living and relevant here we study the ways knowledge grows naturally and socially for economic reasons and what are its modes of growth what are the implications of its growth on libraries and its classification systems knowledge and definition knowledge may have many definitions both philosophical operational but from the librarian viewpoint knowledge is defined as some total of ideas conserved by the society knowledge is created to solve problems facing mankind and leads to new systems products services values and ultimately the outlook knowledge is social it is manifested in sciences arts literature fiction and facts religion and myths expressed feelings and experiences all constitute knowledge there cannot be any knowledge without a knower the man the human being thus the knowledge is knower dependent it is one of its property man is a creator and consumer of knowledge that is the society as a whole the society is the conservator of knowledge that society is conserved knowledge is preserved and conserved by the society and also perpetuated by it characteristics of knowledge that is its nature and properties knowledge is not independent it doesn't exist a priori it is dependent upon knower the human being it is conserved by human society thus it is social in character knowledge is never complete always dynamic always moving because it is fragmentary it is multidimensional and always changing when it is growing thus it is inexhaustible that is never ending it will go on as long as the society is there in other words it is infinite technology social advancements and knowledge creations are mutually dependent knowledge originates from the environment both physical and social man is the knower i mean human being is the knower the nature including society the social nature is the ultimate source of knowledge our sense organs are the raw tools to perceive knowledge apart from its nature now let us see how knowledge and its study is important for librarians knowledge is both recorded and oral tribal and elite societies still orally preserve their knowledge as they have of course lot of knowledge with them librarians deal only with recorded knowledge that is documents whether printed or electronics knowledge is stock in trade of the librarians and information professionals because we only deal with knowledge we preserve it acquire it disseminate it therefore quite obviously the study of the knowledge its characteristics and structure is important to we librarians study of the nature of knowledge is as important to the library and information professionals as is the study of anatomy important to surgeons hence as librarians we need to know the sources nature structure and the flow of knowledge knowing the nature of knowledge we will be able to collect organize disseminate and preserve it effectively for the benefit of the society growth of knowledge as said earlier knowledge is living dynamic it is growing it is a system and every system grows and with growth it also changes growth of knowledge is both additive vegetative i mean as in humanities and cumulative as in sciences as sir ranganathan's fifth law of library science that is library is a growing organism is a 
simple bibliographical manifestation of this impeccable law of the growth of knowledge. Today this growth rate is unprecedented. We are witnessing an exponential growth in knowledge. In the days of internet and digital information revolution, this growth of knowledge is rather out of bound. The internet or the www is a sea of knowledge which is always growing very high rate. It has been estimated that between the beginning of the time and 2003, the humanity had generated 5 exabytes of data to be converted into knowledge. The natural growth of knowledge. Of course, the first type of growth is the natural growth. Professor Paul Weiss and Dr. Ranganathan liken knowledge growth to the growth and development of any living organism. And so does Professor Kevin McAgory. They say that the knowledge grows as a living organism grows. Thus, knowledge grows without any conscious efforts as in a forest, provided the environment for growth is not in Mikkel. In every age and society, there are curious and restless souls engaged in their own in knowledge creation. So that way of knowledge is natural growth because nobody is asking them to work on knowledge and contribute to its growth. They, they grow, they work because they have some inner, inner urge and they are always persons in every society from all the times. This continuous growth makes knowledge a systematic and a system of dynamic continuum. Another factor for the growth of knowledge is the innate curiosity, urge to be held in high esteem and spirit of adventure and exploration in human beings. They, they indulge in knowledge growth because they think the society will respect them for right reasons. That's right. And of course, uh, next to food, shelter and security, the what man wants is to know the unknown, that the man wants to discover, man wants to know more and more things. So this is one factor for the growth of knowledge. Plant growth. Apart from natural growth of knowledge, the civilized and advanced societies make plans for the growth of knowledge. No society, no nation can achieve success in economic, cultural, technological and educational welfare activities if the production and consumption of knowledge is not up to a certain optimum level. Since the industrial revolution, knowledge-based innovations are priced by every society for leading ultimately to economic growth, which further fuels new social and political ideas for welfare, dignity of life and individual justice to mankind. Every new piece of knowledge translates into wealth creation to enrich life on this planet and brings all social benefits. This requires further research to make life secure and ensure growth on this planet. It is essentially the true capital of economy. Knowledge production as a major economic sector is now a reality. Alvin Toffler, the well-known futurologist, is apt to say that information has become perhaps the world's fastest growing and most important business. Therefore, there are planned and organized national and international efforts for its growth. India's National Knowledge Commission, set up by the government in 2005, is a shining example of national plans for development and harnessing knowledge for overall social development. Induced growth or stimulated growth. Induced growth of knowledge lies halfway between natural and plant methods. Knowledge is not a commodity in the sense it is decimated by consumption. We can eat our knowledge cake and multiply it too at the same time. In fact, more we consume and share knowledge, more it grows and multiplies. Gaining or communicating knowledge further facilitates growth of knowledge. Knowledge spreads from knowledge. Widespread education, social awareness, more layer time, wonderful advances in information and educational technology, 
सुपर फास्ट मीन्स ऑफ कम्युनिकेशन जनरल फाइनेंशियल सपोर्ट फ्रॉम गवर्नमेंट्स ऑर्गेनाइज एंड रिलेड रिसर्च इंक्रीज इन नंबर एंड वैरायटी ऑफ इंफॉर्मेशन मीडिया ग्रोथ इन लाइब्रेरी एंड इंफॉर्मेशन सर्विसेज आर सम ऑफ द कंजीनियल फैक्टर्स व्हिच इंड्यूस द ग्रोथ ऑफ नॉलेज अदर फैक्टर्स आर इमेंस प्रेशर ऑन द एकेडमिशियंस एंड रिसर्चर्स टू पब्लिश और पब्लिश पर्सनल रिवेलरीज एंड कॉर्पोरेट वार्स फॉर प्रायोरिटी क्लेम्स और सम अदर सच फैक्टर्स पोस्ट वर्ल्ड वॉर टू कोल्ड वॉर एक्सेप्शनली सिंस द लॉन्च ऑफ स्पुतनिक has generated a lot of research based knowledge modes of knowledge growth research is one process to increase the fund of knowledge intuition imagination and apperceptions are transcendental ways to conceive knowledge whereas experimental empirical and speculative methods are available to all studies on the nature of knowledge have given rise to a body of knowledge called social epistemology as called by Jesse Shira We do not take enough notice of what contemporary philosophers and scientists have to say about the nature of knowledge wrote aptly DJ Foskett Knowledge is labyrinth and stock in trade and study of its nature is of as much important to us as the study of or not me to a surgeon its implications in information management are all pervasive and too numerous in library and information science discipline S. Ranganathan is a pioneer in the study on the modes of knowledge growth and growth of subjects. To make it popular, in the year 1948, Ranganathan got introduced a paper entitled "Development and Structure of the Universe of Subjects" in the postgraduate library science curriculum of the University of Delhi, where he was a honorary professor. The work has been continued. by his schoolmen at the documentation research and training center drtc at bengaluru modes of knowledge growth all the specific modes bengalson discovered and a few more for the growth of knowledge can summarily be discussed under three general modes these are growth by specialization interdisciplinary growth and multidisciplinary growth in fact ragnarson studied growth of knowledge not core knowledge but in form of subjects and especially the main classes his mode was empirical ragnarson categorized all the subjects in the universe of knowledge into three categories namely basic compound and complex and all these things grow different in different ways main classes are basic subjects postulated in a classic classification system by the classificationist compound subjects virtually infinite numbers or basic subjects with a focus uh, such as agriculture of wheat or rural sociology or physics of relativity uh, or sound uh, these are compound subjects and they are always growing in different ways complex subjects are two faced or multi faced subjects such, such as psychology for doctors or uh mathematics for engineers three modes of knowledge growth ranganathan divides main classes which he terms them as basic subjects into following categories primary basic subjects and non primary basic subjects so among the primary basic subjects are newly emerging subjects traditional subjects fused subjects distilled subjects agglomerates and subject bundles on the other hand non primary basic subjects are canonical classes that are subdivisions of a main class systems naturopathy for example in a, in medicine specials sports medicine and environment war economy or high altitude engineering specialization trends which is a first trend for the growth of knowledge when too much growth and vast expansions make a subject unwieldy then the only way left to study and perpetuate is by fragmentation divide into small pieces to make it some bit comprehensible in many disciplines of knowledge there is an increasing tendency to specialize 
to know more and more about less and less that is specialization fragmentation and specialization are two faces of the same coin right sangnathan a specialist is one who knows more and more about less and less till he knows everything about a minuscule part they say even magri a great library scientist from uk aptly writes societies cannot afford to work on the principle that everybody can do anything the basis for efficiency lies in planned specialization of function so management experts tell us this principle is the same whether it is in industrial management or in the world of learning medicine reflects this specialization function to even greater extent and the same theory pervades in social planning the common welfare is themed where each person performs a specialized service for benefit of others and in turn can only rely on their specialized services division of labor in society is a simple outcome of expansion and sophistication specialists emerge as if spontaneously when a community becomes large specializations may have the following modes of emergence broadly speaking there are two modes fission and lamination fission can again be divided into two parts that is dissection and denudation lamination means putting a lamina of one subject on the other to make compound subjects as agriculture is a basic subject agriculture of wheat is a laminated subject and of course is the act of specialization fission the term from nuclear physics has been taken as shown in the figure it is successive ceaseless breaking of the subject into smaller and smaller fragments as in a nuclear chain reaction you see at every level the fission proliferates 2 4 8 and so on in the geometric progression dissection is as a mode of specialization one time splitting of a subject into a immediate area of its subordinate fragments of equal rank is called dissection cutting a whole bread into slices of more or less equal rank and thickness is dissection as you see in the figure generated divisions have a common genus are mutually exclusive exhaustive and equally ranked in simple words all the segments form an array of cognate classes and it is dissection process is horizontal and instantaneous in action for example the indian union is further divided into states and this act is by dissection denudation literally denude means to make bare remove layers one by one long drawn and repeated dissection of a single entity becomes denudation it is stripping a subject like peeling an onion of its successive layers to reach the bottom of the bottomless sciences physical sciences chemistry organic chemistry aromatic compounds benzoids benzene and so on illustrate the denudation at work it works vertically downward and generates a chain of entities in successive subordination lamination main class is large diffuse but somewhat coherent area of knowledge when its area of study is limited by specifying topics it becomes a compound subject from a basic subject lamination is a process of placing one or more isolates on the parent basic subject it is to qualify a main class with one or more topics or isolates english language linguistic grammar and english grammar are three examples of laminated subjects from the main class linguistics the laminated subjects are termed as compound subjects in rangnasan's terminology number of lamine placed on a subject could be as large as feasible number of such lamine is a direct measure of the specialization of the topic and such topics are too numerous in the universe of knowledge as said earlier the growth of knowledge was by specialization coming from broader to specific knowledge but over the process the trend of specialization got so perverse 
that the scholars became isolated and distant from one another. It was difficult to communicate because, because the subjects were so jargon ridden and their terminology was so uh, specific that only within the narrow field one could communicate not to others. So it was a trend which was rather uh, not very useful for the growth of knowledge. So this trend has happily been counterbalanced or supplemented by what we call interdisciplinary studies for the growth of knowledge. And this trend was set after exceptionally the uh, World War II. Uh, what has led to this trend is team and relay research, close cooperation among scholars, availability of subject consultants as in a university. Uh, all these have led the scholars to join hands for interdisciplinary studies. Crossbreeding of subjects has yielded such subjects as chemical physics, biophysics, social Darwinism, or uh, uh, let us say medical geography and so on. Loose assemblage is a combination of two or more subjects or their parts in a sort of temporary, casual or incidental ways involving any relation, namely influencing, comparison, biasing, difference tool or any unspecified one. These subjects are from different disciplines. For example, statistics for librarians, psychology for nurses, or influence of computers on library operations are some such subjects formed by loose assemblage, and of course they are interdisciplinary. In such cases, a subject is studied in light of the other, and here their encounter or assemblage is temporary, ad hoc, or loose, and reversible. Inevitably, these subjects are of interdisciplinary interest. Here you see the diagram of a loosely assembled subject. And this is also known as two-phase subject. And each constituent of a complex subject is termed as a phase by the Nathan. Fusion. It is an advanced stage of loose assemblage. When loosely assembled subjects solidify into a permanent relation and the different constituents are irreversibly joined to form an entirely new subject with its own special isolates and literary variant. It is called a fused subject or a subject born by fusion. Fused subjects transcend complex classes to become basic subjects. Chemical physics, biophysics, biochemistry, geopolitics are a few random examples of homogeneous and irreversibly combined complex classes called fused main subjects, multidisciplinary growth. Ranganathan isolated three more modes of formation of subjects. These are all multidisciplinary in nature, that is more than interdisciplinary, in accordance with the latest trends in research. Area or mission oriented or marginalized social groups such as women, Dalit studies, family studies, early childhood studies being the latest fashion in research. Here you involve experts not from two but many many different subjects to come together, collaborate and produce a piece of research which may be easily termed as multidisciplinary subject. Teamwork and interaction of pure and applied research have also given birth to such subjects which are applied in nature. Distillation. It is also a mode of multidisciplinary growth of subjects. When relatively not so fully developed technique finds applications in different disciplines and as a result it gets more developed and accumulates a body of its own literature distilled out of its different applications. When such a technique acquires sufficient literature then it gets the status of a new main class in itself and it is termed as distilled main or basic subjects, such main classes are slow in formation. Museology, management science, careerology, archaeology, seminar technique and such methodology are some of its good examples. These are born multidisciplinary, partial comprehensions or agglomerates subjects. 
out of courtesy to tradition and many a time out of necessity some basic subjects coordinate in rank have appeared coupled together these are neither loosely assembled nor fused so in their intra relations these are inert subjects plant sciences for example botany agriculture horticulture forestry mathematical and physical sciences humanities religion and philosophy religion and ethics geography and history are some of its examples usually the constituent of a partially comprehensive class or conductive main classes held under an umbrella these are also of generic nature for example social sciences or life sciences partial comprehensive subjects are also termed as agglomerates in the new terminology in the 7th edition of the cc subject bundles the subject bundles comprehend subjects drawn from different disciplines pursued by a team of different specialists they already exist of course but in far too limited in number one possible model is the zif center for interdisciplinary research in germany at bielefeld university in germany which has done this since 1970s such subjects are related and either find applications in other subject or work in unison with each other towards a common goal they are not inert to one another usually these are area or mission oriented studies and usually such subjects are of applied nature these may be in the form of projects undertaken by a widely based research team these projects fall in the domain of big science every expert or group has demarcated area of work at the initial stages subject bundles some of the subject bundles enumerated in the 7th edition of the cc are surface science social science material science earth science hydro science ocean science deep sea science atmosphere science defense science as given by ranganathan in 87 tennessee valley project antarctic expedition gandhiana endology sinology middle east studies are some practical examples of subject bundles these are also called subject clusters some new modes some more modes of formation of subjects have been identified since ranganathan these are mostly interdisciplinary or transdisciplinary in nature these are made by procreation self procreated subjects analogical mode of creation instrument based subjects and in accession mode of creation of subjects if knowledge grows organically then some of it might be procreated by copulation of two subjects one such subject is linguistics which is a knowledge field of recent and rapid growth says mcgregory claiming descent from union of philosophy and philology linguistics has become a widely taught subject since early 1960s it claimed that it is the scientific study of human language the results are specialist studies such as psycholinguistics social linguistics and neurolinguistics furthering the analogy of knowledge by organism some organisms like bisexuals are self procreated applied mathematics applied physics applied optics applied chemistry human biology are a few of numerous such subjects being taught as independent practical disciplines though every knowledge is applied yet every mature knowledge is practical in this the theory is the most applied knowledge analogical mode some subjects find parallels in other disciplines for example darwin's theory of evolution of species and survival of the fittest has found echoes in social institutions and processes society its organs and institutions evolve grow and even mutate into other forms such studies are aptly described by the term social darwinism social darwinism has been used to illuminate and explicate many social phenomena and problems social physics social entropy political dynamics and social biology are some of the examples of such analogical modes of subject instrument based subjects some subjects are based on a machine 
and have grown into full disciplines by gathering subjects around a machine or device. An example is microscopy or microbiology, which has risen from the microscope. But the most outstanding example is of all pervasive discipline of computer science and engineering and of late mobile-based applications. It has encompassed and influenced every startup society. Such subjects are growing and even fragmenting. For example, internet studies or social media are emerging as independent subjects. Annexation modes. Geography is a very good example of all such subjects, areas that grow by accretion or colonization. It has annexed many loosely defendant positions in the social and human sciences, writes Kevin McGarry. This imperialist tendency of geography is visible in its branches such as commercial geography, medical geography, political geography and many more. Take another example of physical education, including sports and aerobics, which draws its sustenance from physical, bio and social sciences. Broadly speaking, all the modes of growth of knowledge and subjects can be divided into three major trends, specialization, interdisciplinary and multidisciplinary modes. Within the specialization, there are two major trends that is fusion and divination. A fusion a fission is again of two types, a dissection and denudation. Interdisciplinary subjects are made by loose assemblage and by fusion of uh, two subjects or more than two subjects. Then multidisciplinary growth has again three modes, distillation, agglomerations and subject bundles. But it may be noted that these are not the only trends. As the society moves, new subjects come into being, new modes of communication of subjects come into being such as the internet. There may be developed or there may be discovered many more subjects, ways in which the subjects uh, grow and multiply. Summarizing, we can say that study of the modes of growth of knowledge is very important for the librarians. It is as important as the study of anatomy to a surgeon. A saying says that a good shepherd knows his sheep and its breed. And since knowledge is librarian's stock in trade, so we must study the nature, flow, and growth of knowledge. And such imp studies have proved very important to the LIC community in various ways. And of course, it is also useful for its own sake as, a, uh, as it provides theoretical background for our subject. Uh, it provides a very good theory for the work librarians do. So now, we can say similarly the different ways of growth of knowledge as given in this diagram.